Hello, everybody, and welcome to the pilot episode of the Mind and Muse podcast. I am Caroline, and I will be your host, and I am coming to you from the western side of the island of Puerto Rico, a small town called Aguada, and here I live with my husband, my dog Snoopy, and until recently, I lived with my daughter, my youngest daughter, Clarissa Beth. She has recently moved out, and she is also the host of the Crochet Cakes podcast. So until recently, we also shared this screen, literally this screen. And um, I thought about it for a while and decided that I would continue on here to share my projects with you, those that I started before Clarissa Beth left, those that I have started after she has left. And... Um, to see if um, we can continue to share this small part of my crafty universe. So, welcome. This will be a crafting podcast as I have it planned. Um, I do several crafts, you know, I practice several crafts. So, amongst them, we'll see some crocheting projects um, every once in a while, um, sewing or felting or knitting. And um, I just want to share some of that. Uh, with you. So, um, if you remember from the Crochet Cakes podcast, I have several projects that I was working on when Clarissa Beth left. If you are joining me without ever having seen the Crochet Cakes podcast, well, you could go over and visit on the YouTube and catch up to date. Um, but if not, I am going to try and do this as if it is the first time we have been meeting. So, um, for finished objects for this week, the first thing I have um, I want to talk about is the choker that I am wearing. I completed this choker, uh, I think probably a couple of days after my daughter moved out. I About a week later or so, I became ill. You know, the flu is going around, everybody's getting sick. And so I just got up one morning and felt that I wanted to crochet jewelry. If I have said... Uh, times before that the first craft that I began practicing um, seriously that I even sold the things that I was making and all of that was, it was a jewelry business small jewelry business that never took off because I also am a professor at a local university a math professor so I didn't always have a lot of time to uh, work and I was a little bit afraid of leaving my full-time job and dedicating 100% to a small business that I, that might best be a fad and I didn't know uh, if it was going to be successful. So, yes, uh, fear, the fear of the unknown was, did not allow me to grow anymore in that area. And so, over the time, I have dedicated myself to other crafts. This morning, I have a finished object that I am wearing and it is the iris... Irish lace in crochet. It's a pattern for Irish lace that I found on um, the site vintagecraftsandmore.com and I decided that I was going to turn it into a choker necklace because my daughter Clarissa Beth, when she left, she was taking with her a dress that we had shown on the Crochet Cakes podcast. Um, it was a um, Halloween themed fabric and um, we, my machine broke down, we weren't able to complete the buttonholes, and so while we were trying to find another way to complete it, well, it left basically, and she never got to show the finished product on um, the po Crochet Cakes podcast, but recently she was going to wear it, and showing me some pictures, I said, well, I think that needs a necklace, and so I made this uh, crochet necklace, and basically... I don't even think she has seen this because I did it while I maybe mentioned it to her, but it never showed it to her. And so this is the lace. Let's see if that'll focus. Probably not because it's trying to focus on my face in the background and not. Let's see. Okay, well. And so the only thing I did was it's about maybe 15 inches of lace and at the back was I added a button that goes through one of the holes. And so I'm going to send it to her or maybe I'll take it to her. We'll be seeing each other soon um, because we're going to meet 
uh, for the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, and so I'll probably just take it to her then. So, that being, I believe, no, well, we, I could call it my only finished pro uh, project, but I'm thinking that maybe the next project I'm going to share with you um, is almost complete. So, it's been living in my Snoopy's bag that my daughter also gifted to me, and it has a couple of pins, one I purchased and one that was gifted to me by um, Deanne of the Addy Day Designs podcast in, a, in a, a cow that I won. And so in this bag, if you are a view of the Crochet Cakes podcast, you remember that it has been living for a while, my uh, Genevieve sweater. My Genevieve sweater. The sweater that I made based on the sweater... Genevieve sweater found in this book, uh, Top Down Crochet Sweaters by Dora Orenstein. We've shown it a lot and mentioned it a lot on this podcast. And this pink one is the Genevieve. Okay, it is, it's got eight lace panels and um, uses a V-stitch. It is a very nice sweater but because I did not have the yarn they recommend I well the yarn that they made it with what they recommend is any DK any yarn ranging from sport weight to DK with some fuzz and some texture and I wanted to work from my stash so I chose um, a gray let me see it's a, uh, yes, a Peyton's, I believe it's Gray Heather, is the name, Medium Gray Heather, is the name of the colorway. And I had, these are um, 50 grams, 125 yards, and the recommended one which would be, well, 50 grams, 125 yards would be 100, in 100 grams, it should have about 250. And the recommended yard uh, called for 100 grams, 274 yards. So each of my 100 grams was lacking. I knew in that sense that I wouldn't have enough. In addition, I only had six balls, which were 300 grams of um, uh, yarn. And so I knew from the very beginning that uh, I wasn't going to have enough to make the full length of this sweater. But I, what I didn't think was that it would be as small as it came out. But um, I'm thinking that since there was less yardage in the 100 grams, I probably had something that was more of the DK. Theirs was probably more of a sport. And um, being the yarn obviously a bit thicker, several things happened with the pattern, right? The first thing, well, here's here's what I have completed. It's got both sleeves. Okay, It's got the lace at the top, and it's got a second sleeve over here. Most of my ends have been woven in. I still have some that haven't been. So, the, where it doesn't meet the um, text version, the version that was in the book, is in the length. I think all in all, I was probably missing from two to three inches in order to complete. And the reason that I haven't called it a finished object is because I'm still thinking about, I'm toying with the idea of completing it in this secondary yarn that I used here. The secondary yarn is uh, yarn from Craftanoon Treats that I've had in my stash for some while. It's when she still she had these um, vellum papered labels. So I think this is um, probably some of the first ones that she dyed. This is in the colorway Dove, and it's it's um, more or less can be described as a grayish 
It has tones of gray and light brown in it. And um, we've got 95% Romney Lambswood, 5% Shetland in this. And this is a, we've always called it a plumpy fingering weight. And um, so I used it to add on the lace. Number one, because I didn't have an, any of the other Peyton's yarn left over. But number two, because it's a, just a gray sweater, I wanted to add some depth to it. I wanted to add a, a different form of texture to it. And maybe a little change in color would make it a little bit more interesting. So I used that yarn for the lace on the sleeves and also for the lace at the top. I am dying to block this. If you remember, from, I had previously completed the sweater, um, the body completely and one of the sleeves and had decided to rip it back completely because it was gigantic, it was enormous. And so I don't know if that could have been because my yarn was a bit thicker than the one they were using. This does have about four to five inches of uh, positive ease in it. So the uh, illustrations show you that it's about 38 inches across the chest area. I didn't want that much positive ease because I don't think it looks good on me. I didn't like the way um, it was looking. So when I ripped it back, I reduced these sections here. I reduced these panels. I reduced the amount of repeats that they had in them. And so um, I basically think I reduced this maybe by 20 stitches all around. And I, I like the fit now. I, I think that when it's blocked, all of this um, bulkiness here, the bulging, will, will be gone because it happened the first time. And I think I can stretch out some of the lace so you can see this really lacy area here. And on the neck, I really like the laciness on the neck. I really thought that added something to this. And so the only thing that I am deciding is whether or not I will continue to add like a, the, a bottom section here following the same stitches but a bottom section in this gray color. I don't know if that would be too much of a change, if that would be too much, um, because I like the way it looks now. The other thing I could do is just to block it and wear it like that to Edinburgh because I wanted to take this to Edinburgh. Um, this is going to be my Edinburgh, one of my Edinburgh uh, sweaters. And then once I'm there, try to find some of this yarn in one of the local stores there and to see if I can complete it after the fact. And and make it its true its true length because it can be used like this cropped it does not look bad but I think I would prefer the longer size okay so I don't know what I'm going to call it yet it is um, the original name is the Genevieve uh, sweater but um, I really want to get it soaked up blocked and be able to try it on and see what the final version is going to look like and, and how much, I, how much I added to the length through the blocking without torturing the wool, of course, but I do want to see if I can enhance, see if I can enhance a little bit the um, lace and so make it pop out. So that was one project that I started and restarted a couple of times. I think I finally got it right, but we won't know until it's blocked and, and it's worn. And so maybe on a second opportunity, I'll be able to share that with you. Another project that I began with Clarissa Beth while she was here is one of the last projects that we were actually doing together was a pair of knitted socks. A pair of knitted socks using um, what is called the Sock Emergency Kit by Kayleen of Little Bean Loves uh, Dyed Yarn. And at the moment that Clarissa Beth left, well, we had our last podcast, at least, we had each done one sock. We had each completed one, in my case, one very wonky sock. I don't know if you remember here, the hole that I had that I tried to stitch up with um, of the yarn that I was hiding, my endy bits there, and also that... Uh, I had asked Clarissa to knit a couple of rows for me because I was tired of knitting the ribbon. And, well, we totally have different tension, and so you can actually see, like, that ridge there that 
wasn't intentional. It's not a mistake. It's just that she had a very loose retention. It might come out with blocking. These haven't been blocked, but they haven't been blocked because they're very baggy. And since they're very baggy, I just didn't want to add more bagginess to them, but, oh, I don't know. So I did complete the second sock. And if you follow me on Instagram, you remember that I was practically crying about the fact that Clarissa wasn't here anymore and that I had to kiss her this by myself. But um, there are a lot of helps on the internet, a lot of videos. And so I think I was able to do that successfully. I don't know. It doesn't uh, look that bad to me. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, to me, what would look bad? I was just dying to get it done. Oh, I don't know why dying. I don't know why I say it that way, dying to get it done. But um, I like to get things off the hooks or off the needles. But in this case, I, I suffered a bit. Uh, knitting did not come natural to me. Knitting with the nine-inch circulars did not come natural. Knitting with the uh, magic loop. This uh, cuff over here, I used the nine-inch circular. It was the first cuff we did, Clarice and I did together. This second uh, one I did with the um, magic circle. No, circular needles, whatever they're called. And uh, my tension was a lot tighter. I was definitely trying not to get holes and, and not to get ladders. And I put so much attention into that that I almost wasn't able to get them on. But um, they're almost complete. They, the ends have not been hidden in. This is the Luna Colorway by Little Bean Loves. And with the emergency sock kit, she gives you this long tube of, um, um, of knit. And she sends you a mini skein so that you can complete the toes, heels, and cuff. And in the case of this Luna, she sent me two different colors, and so I decided to combine them. So they are wearable. I can wear them. I would complain only about that they're baggy here. Uh, maybe 60-inch socks is not what I should go for when I knit socks, if I ever knit them. But, um, but I can use them. I can use them, and so they're nice and soft. Um, and we'll see how they stand up to my crochet socks in terms of durability. So that is a finished object. I said that I only had one, but now that I think about it, this is a finished object. And, and um, the Genevieve sweater is a, haven't decided yet if it's a finished object or not, but it's close to it. The third project that I was working on was living in this bag that Clarissa made me before she left. This was our exchange gift for Valentine's Day. And in this bag was living a sock that I was designing. Uh, should I say was? I guess I can say was because the design I feel is basically complete. I am. I would need to redo it in another yarn and make sure that in my notes, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you wanna see my notes, but make sure that in my notes that I don't know who in the world is ever gonna be able to understand them. They're all on different papers. <laughs> they're all on different sections. They're bunches of scribbles. Um, but well, hopefully I'll be able to put those notes together and get a pattern out there. Because the purpose of the socks, these are called my always socks. I have one, I have a half finished object. One of them has been completed. These, my always socks. Um, I did use elements from different uh, designers and put them together to form this. This is not the stitches, the stitch pattern is not original to myself. The uh, construction in terms of putting them together, um, a lot of my ideas I got from the crochet kitten blogspot.com. She has a an entry, it's a couple of years gone already, maybe from 2015, 2014, in which she designs a crochet sock for a child, for an infant, and giving you measurements that should be taken on the foot, and says, though she doesn't do that in that blog post, and I, I didn't see a blog post later on where she uh, did repeated the process for an adult size. She says, though, in the, the blog entry that you can repeat the process, the measurements 
are the same, the relationship between your measurements and the stitches that you have on your sock need to be the same. And so more or less she was given a recipe of how to create a crocheted sock. So I tried to follow as much of her recommendations as I could, at the same time adjusting the pattern to my foot size, and I was pretty happy with it in the end. So I've got a, um, a toe, nothing spectacular, just a, a toe that starts out here with um, maybe a row of nine or ten chains, and then we chain into the back loops of those chains and begin going around and around, creating like an oval, uh, a wedge, creating more or less a wedged uh, toe. I brought my toe down two inches for this sock, and I am thinking that maybe in the future for this type of toe, I don't want it to be that long. Then I worked on the leg, and in the leg design, design, I wanted to use the moss stitch because I know that that is a stretchy stitch, and um, I was undecided of whether to use the moss stitch also at the foot or to make my foot the base of my foot as I usually make it, which is with linked half double crochets. Now, because I was using the moss stitch, uh, if you know most moss stitches, they, you can do them in different ways, but it's a combination of uh, a smaller stitch and a bigger stitch. So I was doing a, a slip stitch and then a half double crochet. I've seen people do it with a single crochet and then a double crochet. And so the um, I wanted this, the size of the front to meet the size of my bottom. So I found that I couldn't do uh, consecutive rows of linked half double crochets because the back was growing too quickly in comparison to the front. So I went with one row of linked half double crochets, one row of single crochets, and that um, it wasn't perfect, but it kept it more, more of a match. And so when I got to my heel, I brought up my leg a little bit in the original pattern of the, the sock, and then I continued for the leg to make this cupcake pattern. Maybe you can see the little cupcakes there. It would be much better if this were not variegated so that you could observe the cupcakes a lot better. But I basically did three rows of cupcake stitches and then I finished it off with a knit, a knitted cuff. And all this has its reason because it was a sock dedicated to um, commemorate, if you want, or just remember the day that Clarissa Beth left and moved out. So the colorway is Something Wicked This Way Comes from Kay of the um, Bakery Bears. And um, it's a Harry Potter themed yarn and Clarissa Beth is a Harry Potter fan of all her life. Um, the cupcake, obviously, because she is crochet cupcakes on Instagram and on Ravelry and, and all of her um, crochet designing has been with that name. And the knitted cuff instead of the crochet cuff because Clarissa Beth knitted me my first pair of socks and I will forever, well, Clarissa Beth has knitted for me all of the knitted socks that I have and I forever love them and will always remember her by the knitted socks she has made me. So I wanted to end in a knitted cuff. And it was a design that, yes, I was creating it um, to commemorate her parting, but also because we were thinking when we were still together on the podcast of um, doing a sock along, participating in a uh, sock along, a, a sock making cow that Faye of the Crochet Circle podcast mentioned that she would be hosting more or less uh, after summer, maybe August, September. And I had spoken to Cliff about why don't we design a sock representative of our podcast and ask people if they want to join us in making that sock and we can include small videos of the different sections of the sock and how to make it. So um, it was a plan at that time. And so I continued to work on that plan. I have completed, I have the second sock 
This project was in this bag gifted to me by Clarissa, and so I still am working on this, completing the second sock, but it's almost complete. I am just having to uh, knit the cuff, knit the cuff. But uh, my second sock, uh, since the trial was for me and I was still trying to perfect this pattern, uh, my second sock, I changed the foot so that there were moss stitches all the way around. I was thinking, well, it might be a first crochet sock for some people, or it would just crochet up faster. I don't know how much time we're going to have for this cow, but it would crochet up faster if we just had one stitch all the way around. And so I tried the moss stitch to see how it would work all the way around, if it would be comfortable, if I could, if I would feel the stitches, if it would be a thicker sock than this one. Half-linked um, stitches always pr produce a cushiony a cushiony foot, and Clarissa liked that feel, but I felt it compared very well, and so, and I actually, um, being that it's the same stitch in the round, you don't have the problem of the back going faster than the front or anything like that. Um, it made it simpler to crochet because you were doing the same thing over and over again, and so I'm thinking that maybe in the final version, I could include maybe an option of one or the other or just going with this one because I, I do like the fit. I do like the fit. Why would I like the fit um, better? I don't know, but I, I feel like I like the fit better. So this is almost completed and um, yes, I think I've um, jotted it down correctly and that I have the uh, measurements annotated enough to be able to repeat that process in the near future. So moving on, I wanted to mention the fortune cookie cow that is being run by Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast. Claudia, um, in her latest episode of her podcast, uh, opened up several fortunes that would be like general fortunes that anybody could use. On the 16th of February, which was the Chinese New Year, that was the day that the cow officially began. I also selected a uh, fortune, or I asked the fortune cookie cow, what's it, fortune cookie, myfortunecookie.com, uh, .uk, I went to the site and I asked it to select a fortune of the day. And on the day, on the 15th of February, the fortune that I obtained was being alone and being lonely are two different things. I thought that was kind of appropriate, kind of appropriate for the changes that we're going through right now um, and at my house and um, between Clarissa and I. And so I liked it. I think I'm going to keep it. Along with the fortune that I also selected while Clarissa was still here, which was um, February 2nd, it said a loved one is of utmost importance at this time. I also thought that was way appropriate. And for the you will be going on a fun road trip with good friends, I have selected to complete the Addy Day Designs Blurred Lines sweater. I have selected my yarns to create the Addy Day Designs Blurred Lines. This first one is a Craftanoon Treats yarn. Backwards, sorry. This one is a Craftanoon Treats yarn. It's 75% fine Maria merino, 25% mulberry silk, and it is in the colorway Misty Cloud. This one is the colorway Heather from Forbidden Woolery. And it is 80% Superwash Blue Face Lester and 20% Bamboo. So I spoke to one of the testers while we chatted or interchanged comments online and I thought she and I were more or less the same size, and she told me that she had made the sweater in an extra small. So I'm going for the extra small, and I'm hopeful, hoping that these, I have um, 400 grams, and I'm hoping that they will, they will let me do the work, the complete sweater with 
long sleeves and everything. We'll see. So that's my making in the plan, right? The next, the next make that I'm, I have planned for sure um, to go for that fortune cookie cow um, because it's a sweater that I'm hoping to take to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Now, if you think about it, Edinburgh Yarn Festival is going to be the weekend of the 15th, 16th, and 17th of March. And today we are ready at February 22nd. Can I make a long sleeve sweater in two weeks? We'll see. We'll see. If it doesn't go to Edinburgh, at least it will have been created with that idea and based on the fortune, and it could still enter into the cow. So that's the make that I have in the planning. Just to share with you uh, some recent purchases. I'm not a big fan of sharing acquisitions because it's like uh, bragging about what I purchase and what I can purchase, but sometimes it's um, I like the idea because we are, are sharing things that are made by small businesses and that helps promote their business. We are reviewing their products and so we're telling people how uh, we like them and how well we find them and that helps them to make more sales. So in that sense, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Not because I want to brag about what I'm buying, but because I want to share uh, my reviews of the products and help these small businesses make their day. So recently I purchased a couple of projects bags, not because I can't make them, but because I just, sometimes you can't always find the same fabrics that they can find at other places. So yes, I do purchase project bags every once in a while. This one, for example, where my washcloth for living was made by Pearl and Plum. KCACY podcast host or co-host along with Allison. This is Vivian. And I just loved this year has been all about the llamas. And everywhere you look, they've got the, the llama pattern. And so I thought it was beautiful. It's a beautiful drawstring bag. Right? It's very pretty. And at the same time, I also purchased a wow <laughs> tote bag. <laughs> It's ginormous. I didn't know it was going to be that ginormous. Well, I don't know. What does an extra large tote bag mean to people? They just I guess it didn't mean the same thing to me that it meant to her. Some of these tote bags she made after her recent trip to London where she was going to visit with the other half of the KCACY podcast. And, and some of them she mentioned that she made up with towels. That I'm not sure if this one is, is you know, fabric... Um, upcycled from towels. I was thinking that it said yes because it said an upcycled tote bag, but I just love it. I love the colors. I have all around red, white, and blue fan, especially white and blue. I love the sailor, the sailor aspect of it. I, I love those colors. And then here on the inside, it's got this beautiful pocket. How gorgeous is that? And there are several pockets. I don't know if I'd be able to see them. But if you could look inside the way I am looking inside this bag, you would see that on the inside, there are several pockets made out of this same polka dot fabric. So this was definitely made for me. I'm all about polka dots. I love the blue and the white. I love London. And our visits to London have always been well remembered. I love the fact that it's been upcycled from towels from kitchen towels I just don't know when I'm ever going to use it because I don't know <laughs> I'm thinking about taking it to Edinburgh and using it as my my haul bag so that I can bring back my haul in it but it is beautiful so thank you very much Vivian it was a fantastic job I just love it and I'll be checking back every once in a while to see what what new things maybe you'll have one from Edinburgh from towel that we'll buy there and, and I'll get a hold of that. I also purchased another project bag from, they all have stories, there are all reasons behind, there's a rational process behind this purchase. This was from Betsy Makes, right? and I purchased the bag, I think she had a sale, but I'm not sure, maybe not. 
The idea was she had some bags left over from a recent update, and so I went to check out, and this one was still available. And I love the color. The mustard color reminds me of Clarissa Beck all the time. I love the color combination. I love that it's a drawstring bag. And I also loved the fact at the moment that there were kitties playing with yarn balls. I just love that. And not only that they were kitties, that they were white kittens. Because recently, my uh, neighbors um, adopted a cat who was uh, close to having her little kittens. And she had five white kittens. Now, they weren't all perfectly white. They had um, rings of yellow on their tails. And some of them had uh, patches of brown on their fur and on their face. But there were some of them that were completely white. And the cat had a second litter and where she had more white cats. So at one point, there were about five white cats who, every morning would be at my doorstep when I opened the door, especially at the time when they knew that I was going to feed my dog Snoopy because my dog has a, has a delicate stomach. He eats, he eats food that is very high in um, a meat protein and very low in all those additives that they add to them because they make them sick. And so in addition, I always, it's dry. He doesn't like to eat it that much. So I always add to it a little bit of gravy with some type of meat in it. And so the cats obviously like that. So they come in the mornings and they get a couple of pebbles of the, the dog's food with the chicken on it, usually chicken, and they just love it. And so I haven't adopted any cats, but they hang around. White cats have been hanging around and that just, I guess you buy these things sometimes to commemorate things that you want to remember. And so with this bag, I will always remember um, the white cats. Unfortunately, they have been dying off because they are, although they have been adopted in terms of being fed and, and being taken care of and their medicines for fleas and medicines for, for parasites and all that, they are free to wander the uh, wilderness, <laughs> to wander the area. And so they do eat a lot of things that, well, sometimes can be fatal. So um, there's less of, there's few of them now, but I will always remember one of them that is very, very um, friendly and always comes up to me and purrs and wants to rub against me, not knowing that I'm not that kind of person. But anyway, she only does it for the food, but that's okay. So yeah, those are my handbag purchases. And, and there was one last purchase that I mentioned at the end of um, Clarissa's last podcast. And just to show it, because I mentioned it but didn't show it, this is the last yarn that I have purchased. Well, the most recent yarn, I don't know if it's going to be the last one. It was not, there was not supposed to be any yarn purchasing until I went to Edinburgh and I've been trying to do all these projects out of stash with that purpose. But you know me, I told you a name can get to me. And this is from Little Bean Loves. It's her Harry Potter collection colorway. This one is Hedgewig's Final Flight. And if you know anything about Harry Potter, Hedgewig was Harry Potter's owl and he was like in this white grayish color here and I guess she has combined it with green because he was Harry's owl and Harry had green eyes although I don't know I have to look at the movie and see if Hedgewig had green eyes too and there are some blacks and some grays in there so I'm a sucker for names and they're in two they're separated into two because I believe this was a set that she was dying up as a sock blank and then she was reskeining them re and, and separating them into two 50 gram hanks so that when you made your socks, you could get, you wouldn't get perfectly sister socks, but they might be sister cousin socks. And so I want to give that a try. We'll see how that works up for me. Well, and that's it for today. I guess I should say thankfully because this has taken me forever. Um, I just want to wish you all a very happy crafting week at whatever you may dedicate your time. May you have many successes and feel very happy making it all. So until we see each other again, thank you for joining. You can hit the like button if you've liked it. You can hit the subscribe because hopefully there will be other um, videos coming up soon. And check back later. Hit the little bell so you can get notifications and... 
We'll see each other soon. In the meantime, happy crafting! Jesus, can you even see my eyes underneath? Can you see my eyes? Am I too high? Let's see. Maybe I can scrape out some of that hair and you'll be able to see my eyes underneath this. Well, let's just get this over and done with because I have no idea why I'm doing this or why I decided to do this, but okay. Clarissa always told me that I had to speak loud. So let's see how loud I can speak without feeling embarrassed and without feeling subconscious and without wondering if the neighbors are thinking that I'm crazy talking to myself. But let's just try. Hello, everybody, and welcome to... I can't believe it. Can you believe it? <laughs> we'll give them a 